in louder amen. amen let's have a say god bless you how to attract your divine partner what did i say <laughs> That is the principle of magnetizing your divine partner. That's what we want to discuss now. And listen very, very carefully. Very, very, very carefully. And we're going to be touching some areas. I believe God will give us speed as we go along. Praise the Lord. With your kind permission... I'm going to take 10 minutes extra of your time. Is that okay? Because I want you to understand this thing very, very well. How to attract your divine partners or the principles of magnetizing your divine spouse or your divine partner. Praise the Lord. In Genesis chapter 24, we see a very, very interesting story. Genesis chapter 24. If you open your Bible to Genesis 24, you see what we're talking about here. Abraham wanted a wife for his son. Abraham wanted a wife for his son Isaac. Abraham was a man who hears from God. And he did some very, very interesting things. And from those interesting things, we can pick up some principles. Amen. Genesis chapter 24. Are you there? Good. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my tie, and I will make thee swear. It's, it's a serious matter. I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. So he said the man should swear that never will he go and bring an unbeliever to marry his son. Are you following what I'm saying? So the first thing to get from here is that don't even think about it that you want to go and marry a child of the devil. And like I used to say, if you marry a child of the devil, Satan becomes your father-in-law. And that father-in-law will trouble you. Don't even think about it. Abraham made his servant to swear that he will not do so. For, but thou shalt go unto my country, unto my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. It was a difficult job for that servant. And the servant said unto him, Paradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I need bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware! that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred and which spake unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give the land. He shall send his angels before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. The angel that will bring your partner shall appear. He shall do what? He shall send his angels before thee. And the angel will fetch the partner. So it's a valid prayer point to pray that let the angels that will bring my divine partner go into operation now. It's a valid prayer. So the angels will go before you and bring out the person from among them. And I'm praying for somebody here. Wherever the enemy is hiding your divine partner, the angel of God will fetch them out. You bring them out, 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 you bring them out in the name of Jesus. I 
And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the tie of Abraham, his master, and swore unto him concerning the matter. And the servant took ten camels of camels, ten camels of the camels of the master, and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand there by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water and let it come to pass that the damsel to which I shall say, lie down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camel's drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. The man knelt down and prayed. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with a pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled a pitcher and came up. And the servants ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and laid on her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have drunk drinking. And she hasted, emptied her pitcher onto the trough, and ran again to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. 21. And the man, wondering at her, held his peace. The story is that he was asked to go and look for a wife for Isaac. The man knew that it was a difficult job. Abraham had prayed for angelic assistance. The man now got to the place, he settled down and prayed that Lord the person that will come out. When I say, give me some water to drink, he gives me water. Not only giving me water, but he will go and serve all this camel's water. Let it be the person. Now, many of us, if you are not a very good reader of the Bible, you won't know the difficulty in what is happening here. The man had many camels. And the camels drink water. Serious water. So for a lady, a young lady, to give a man it, she does not know water to drink, and then begin to go to the well and fetch for the camels, watch for the camels, fetch for the camels, it's a hard job. She must have spent almost one to two hours looking after those camels. So that's why the man stood and was wondering and was watching her. Something had happened there. The divine partner of Isaac had been magnetized. Perhaps you are in this meeting today and you are in the category of dating the wrong men. You are in the category of attracting the wrong men like a magnet. You are in the category of get, getting, getting close to men who later disappoint you. Or you are in the category of men who will look at you and say, well, eh, I like you, but I don't love you. Or you are in the category of men who will say, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I've had that kind of grammar before. <laughs> a woman caught she caught her fiancé going for dinner with another lady and he said, ah, what are you doing here? say, well, eh, I love you but I'm not in love with you that kind of wicked English was spoken maybe you're here too you lie awake all night worrying yourself that does it mean I'm going to die alone? Is this how I'm going to live? Or maybe you are here. You are tired of being the chief bridesmaid of other people. You are tired of being the uh, best man of people. Or you are fed up with people asking you, excuse me, uh, when are you going to marry? When are you going to marry? Maybe you are here, you're like that. Or maybe you are here too. Your evil friends are already advising you. Go to the spam bank. Let them give you spam to get pregnant. At least have a child. Doesn't matter whether the child has no father or not. Maybe you are here too. Every man that you have ever turned to has been Mr. Wrong. 
Every man you ever turn to, Mr. Long. Those that you think, maybe, let me see whether I can manage this one. Eventually, you discovered that the man can tell lies and all the dead in the mortuary will rise up. <laughs> and you run away. Or maybe already, so your friends already tell you that if you want to attract men, the best thing is to, is to get breast implants so that you can balloon your breast. Maybe they already tell you that one. Some they say, well, the reason the men are not coming is because your bum bum is too flat. Let's look for something to pump it up a little bit. Maybe you are already listening to those kind of advices. Perhaps you are here to you are attractive, you are intelligent, you are talented, you are good, you are educated, you are kind, but you can't just find the correct partner. Or maybe you have got to that level when people promise to call you, the man promised to call, the woman promised to call, the next time you call, you say, who is speaking? Say, I'm uh, Joshua. Say, Joshua what? I say, don't you remember me? We spoke in the restaurant. Say, don't call this number again. <laughs> maybe you are here too. You thought this was a good man. But you find that the man kept, he kept anywhere you go, he will keep staring at other women. Keep staring at other women as if his saliva is going to drop. He's staring at other women. And you are getting fed up. Or maybe the men you find are those tied to their mommy's apron. If their mommy does not approve, then problem. Or maybe you are the kind of, kind of woman. You met a, a man. And the first question the man is asking is, are you a virgin? When he himself <laughs> the person is asking, Are you a virgin? As <laughs> himself has, uh, has, has run a lot of high mileage. Or you met a man, the first thing the man will say is, uh, What sexual position do you like? And that's the first time you are meeting the person. And so you run away saying, This one has no road. So, we are not here to teach you how to dress to attract a man. I'm not here to teach you how to, the method to use to make a man run after you like a dog. I'm not here to teach you how to get the best makeup that will attract people. What I'm here to teach is spiritual principles that will bring the man from which a rib was removed to make you out. Or spiritual principle that will make the man to locate the kind of person God wants him to marry. I'm not here to teach you any seductive surgery that they are teaching people now. I want you to understand that one very well before we go on now. The truth is this. Contrary to opinions, there are plenty of wonderful, exciting, godly, and kind men around. Contrary to opinions, there's plenty of very good women, wonderful women, kind women around. Age is not what we're talking about now. Because if you're talking about age, you're as old as you feel. If you say you're old, then you're old. We're not talking about that now. We're talking about serious matters. When God wanted to bring a wife to Adam. There were three things involved in providing that wife. Three things involved in providing that wife. Number one, it involved sleep. God, when God wanted to bring a wife to Adam, he made Adam to do what? Sleep. It caused Adam to go to sleep while he did the work. In other words, Adam was totally uninvolved in the choice of God. Adam had no opinion on the matter. God made him sleep, then brought the woman. There is a lesson there for all of us who are looking for future partners. The best thing you can do is to allow that area of your life to sleep. 
and allow God to do his work and bring this partner to your life. This may be contrary to some teachings that you need, you need to be this, you need to be that, you need to be that, you need to be sharp, you need to wear high issues, you need to walk like this, you need to cut walk, you need to elephant walk, you need to do that, you need to do this, this, that, that. Adam did not know the kind of woman God was bringing because he was asleep. So, let your minds go to rest. That's what I mean. Don't kill yourself with worry. Because the more you worry, the older you become. And the more you worry, the more your blood pressure will go up. So, Adam just slept and God now did what he should do. He was the one who fashioned the, the lady. Adam had no opinion about it. That's how it's meant to be. Number two thing that involved, that it involved, it involved a surgery. Got out to go there when Adam was asleep, took a rib out of Adam to make the man. Meaning that, you know, every surgery involves pain. Meaning that finding a mate sometimes can involve some pain. Even after the mate has been secured, it can involve pain. The family may say no. All kinds of things may be happening, but you have to endure it. It involved that one. So a rib was taken from Adam and the woman was created. Wherever that rib is, there is a magnet that should pull them together. But this is where the enemy comes to ensure that those ribs do not find each other. If we were able to break the hold of the enemy, creating a gap between the rib and the man, then we have solved a big problem. I pray that every stone the enemy has placed between you and your divine partner will be broken to pieces. In the name of Jesus. The third thing that it involved is that it involved a symbol. That's a symbolism in it. The rib was taken from the thing was taken from the rib of the man. Not from the head, not from the leg. God has a purpose for this. So when you are seeking for a partner, don't start looking for a bank manager. And you, the brother, don't start looking for a cook. Because some people, marriage is, in marriage, the woman is looking for a banker, the man is looking for a cook. So, it's, it's, it's a complementary thing. These things are appears to us in the book of Genesis. So God teaches us that he is the one who can design the best wife suitable for a person. We don't need to help God in designing a wife for yourself. And blessed is a man who does not wish to improve on what God has already done. But there are ten serious mistakes that singles make when it comes to attracting a partner. Let me run through those mistakes very quickly before I go into these principles. How many mistakes did I say? The mistake number one is to believe that your look or your age or your income determines who you marry. Your look, your age, or your income determines who you marry. It's mistake number one. Don't make that mistake at all. As far as the spiritual realm is concerned, those things are not relevant at all. At all. Nobody is ugly. Nobody is ugly. Every woman has, has her own beauty. In fact, I've never seen a, a ugly born again sister. All of them are beautiful. But in their own way. 
Because God says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Some were wonderfully made, some were fearfully made. The, prop, the thing is that all of us are made. Mistake number two is to have an idol in your heart. At least you have already made up your mind what you want. It must be six feet tall. She must be slim. She must have big breasts. He must have long legs. He must speak good Queen's English. He must go to University of Ibadan or University of London. So you have already formed an idol in your heart. Not knowing that sometimes what you need is not what you want, and what you want is not what you need. God, what God will bring. It's husband that will compliment your husband you will compliment or who will compliment you. So that's it. And the only place to find a perfect marriage is the cemetery. That's the only place. If God brings two people together, you the husband can give anything away, his car, his house, his clothes. The madam will not be like that. To balance up. Like a pendulum that swings to the left, swings to the right. Alright. God will not bring two talkative people together. If not, they will start, they will start fighting. I just want to talk, 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 talk. I just want to talk, talk. Everybody's talking. The house becomes a radio. That's not work like that. So if you have any idol in your heart, you need to pray the prayer they used to teach us when we were in primary school, that God break every idol in my heart. Break every idol in my heart. You will eventually begin to realize that fine face, beautiful face, handsome face, long legs, long leg, ability to speak Queen's English is not enough to get you a good home. It's a little... Deeper than that. Deeper than that. I want you to know this very, very well. And if you come to a prophet with an idol in your heart, the Bible says God will answer you according to that idol that you have already put inside your heart. So remove that idol. That dream marriage that you have planted inside, put it aside. Tell God to give you who he wants to give you. It's a mistake. Singles make. The third mistake singles make is sex outside marriage. The more you allow your body to become an entertainment to somebody who is not your husband, the, the, the farther you are away from the grace and power of God. And the more you sell off your self-respect. Any man that you meet, any woman that you meet and they do not want to wait for marriage before sex, then you have not met a believer. You have met a sex addict. And immediately, and there are some people, the kind of covenant guiding their family, immediately they allow a man to enter into them, to sleep with them, the man will run away. The enemy has put certain things in their womb. Once the man enters into that place, the man will certainly run away. Such people, the only way they can be married is to get married before they start having sex. They have sex before marriage, that's the end of that marriage. Many of us are falling into that error. And we need to pray. Some need to place their hand on their womb. Some need to place their hands on their uh, reproductive organ and command whatever demon that is inside to come out, which they have acquired during sex outside marriage. Mistake number four is spiritual ignorance. Spiritual ignorance. And many people don't know what they call spiritual marriage. If you say spirit husband, spirit wife, it's not clear.
So anybody who regularly have sex in the dream and you wake up feeling sexually aroused, there is a spiritual marriage which you need to cancel. Mistake number five is being unequally yoked with unbelievers. Once you begin to occupy the tabernacle of your life with unbelievers, getting a godly husband will be very far from you. Mistake number six is consultation of the enemy for the choice of marriage. Some consult astrologers, some construct some con contact witches, they consult occultic people and they begin to give you evil prophecy that will destroy your destiny. One madam came to me many years back and she had a list of six people. She said, Jill, uh, my daughter Funke wants to marry you, but there are six people proposing to her. So these are their names, sir, and their date of birth, as if I was to issue them a passport. Yes, pray, ask God, which one of these six is her husband? I said, Madam, I don't need this list. Bring Funke here. Bring the Funke here. I don't need the list. It's Funke I want to see, not the list. And he said, but uh, I've taken the list to one prophet, and the prophet said, number one is okay. I just wanted the confirmation. He said, no, I don't confirm such things. Go and bring her here. She drove Funke to me. And the, my first question to Funke, I said, Funke, do you know these six men? He said, yes. How many of them have you slept with? She said, all. So, Mama, did you hear? So it's Funke that needs attention, not the six men. And no good prophet will look at people's name and say, this one is bad, this one is good. You have no power to create human beings. So you have no power to declare somebody that the person is bad. Mistake number seven. Thinking that seduction can obtain marriage. What did I say just now? Aha. Uh -huh. so, uh, don't worry. When I finish dressing, <laughs> eyes will turn. I tell you. <laughs> eyes will turn. Eyes will turn. <laughs> and so you have started practicing how you are going to be walking about. You have practiced everything. It doesn't bring a good husband. In fact, more than anything, it makes the serious men to see you as an unserious woman. Mistake number eight. Ignoring foundational powers. Ignoring foundational powers. That is, <laughs> you have studied your family. You have seen that in that family, marriage is a problem. And you have not taken any action to safeguard your own. And you are believing that everything will just work like that. No, you need to work at it and break whatever covenant is in place. Mistake number nine is to run faster than God. Run faster than God. So you are running towards marriage simply because those who are younger than you have married and so you are running not knowing that the battle is not for this. The race is not for the swift and the battle is not for the strong. The fact that they say get on your marks, get set, go and somebody was the first person to run off, it doesn't mean the person will win the race. It is better to marry late and be happy than to marry early and be unhappy for the rest of your life. Mistake number 10 is to ignore prayer as a weapon of 
marital connection. Did you get those 10 mistakes? Yes or no? Now, what are the principles to attract your divine partner? There are 22 of them. I'm going to rush through and I believe the Lord will help us. Number one principle. Are you still with me? Number one principle is you must understand the spiritual law of attraction. What did I say just now? Say it loud and clear. Spiritual law of attraction states that you will attract to your life the kind of energy you two are carrying about, whether positive or negative. That is, you will attract to your life the kind of energy you carry, whether positive or negative. That is, every human being has a charge, whether negative charge or positive charge. What you you radiate is what attracts into your life. So every man or woman is a living magnet. If you have negativity in you, negative people will be coming towards you. If you have positivity in you, positive people will be coming against you. So if you find that all those who are coming to you, they're negative, negative, negative. What that is telling you is that you should look inward and check yourself. Ordinary anger, getting angry, is enough to attract negative things to you. Ordinary allowing yourself to be depressed is enough to attract negative things to you. Whereas if you are a happy person, you are happy inside. The kind of people that will be attracted to you are people who are happy. If you are a deceiver inside, the kind of people who will be approaching you are deceptive people as well. This is where we need serious prayers. That any evil thing in us, magnetizing evil things to us, should be destroyed. And should be broken to pieces. And God will help us in Jesus' name. So, your dominant thoughts, what you think about most, what you think about most, you will eventually attract those things into your life. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart. So, you see, that thing you are thinking, 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 thinking about, it becomes an energy and it attracts things to your life. Can you raise up your right hand and say, magnet of darkness. Attracting evil into my life. You are a liar. Dead. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Pata Satila Kayaba. Ria Poli Katasinta Nikaya Boshanda. In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. amen. Do you understand principle number one? Yes. The law of attraction. Job said, What I fear most has come unto me now. That fear has attracted something. Attracted something. When you sit down and cry, 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 cry. Oh my goodness, why is my life like this? Uh, That crying that you are crying is attracting some evil to you. You are creating a force. It's attracting 
evil to you. This is one principle many people don't understand. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are of good report, say, be thinking on these things. Don't think on the negative because it is an energy that will come to you. As a man thinketh in his heart, so you see. So you see. One, one lady came to me and said, Hey, Joe, each time I look at my mother, I hate marriage. Hey! I hate marriage. Say, so if marriage can turn this woman to this, then I don't want to have anything to do with it. She's already attracting a negative force. Using a mother as a standard instead of using Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Key number two. Ask God to send ministering angels. Ask God to send ministering angels to uproot your partner from wherever he or she is. Ask God to send who? The strangers. To uproot your partner from wherever he is. I'm praying for somebody here. Your partner that is in the valley of witchcraft, they are covering the partner hope not to locate you. That partner shall come out in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud. Number three. Is that right? Ask God to send you your divine partner that he has created for you. That's different from the ministry of angels prayer. Now, ask God now to send him to you. These are keys to attracting a divine partner. Can we go on? Number four. Be genuine. Be a genuine person. People hate fake people. Men hate fake people. Women hate fake people. One man took a lady out for dinner. And he was boasting on how many cars he had that he just brought the cheapest for the dinner. After the dinner, the man forgot where he parked the car. The lady was looking at him. He was so agitated. He, was so, he asked the keyboard. He didn't remember where he parked the car. He was so agitated. When he couldn't find the car on time, he broke down and cried like a baby. Hey, hey. What kind of trouble is this one now? He said, why are you crying? You said you have so many cars, and this one is the cheapest. Why do they cry? Not knowing that the car was borrowed. Of course, the lady ran away. Because people don't like fake, fake people. Fake people. Be genuine. Be genuine. When you see a man or a woman, even when you put a gun at their head, they will still be telling lies. Be genuine. Five. Be matured and self-sufficient. Be matured and self-sufficient. Lady, find something doing. Man, Get something doing. Be physically matured. Be emotionally matured. Be spiritually matured. Be financially matured. Number six. Are you still with me? Do not be desperate. 
once you are too desperate, you will definitely make mistakes. Men don't like desperate women. And women don't like desperate men. Very desperate. Six. Seven. Good. That means you are following me. (laughs) Seven. Do not act like a man when you are a woman. And do not act like a woman when you are a man. Do not act like a man when you are a woman. Do not act like a woman when you are a man. Thank you. When you appear in a place and you as a woman, you want to dominate the whole environment and you want everybody to take orders from you. People don't like those kind of people. Men run away. Say, ah, this one. Oh, you are a man. And you are following the woman. You are are a woman, you are going out. And they shout somewhere, pua! Say, yeah, 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 my mother. Why, why is my mother? (laughs) Women don't like men who are so weak and, and acting like women. Any small thing, they are urinating their trousers. And the woman is wondering, ah, be a man. Say, be a man. I start, ah, be a man. Be a man. Be a man. Somebody was telling us one day that he was in the plane. And the driver of the plane said, the, the will of the plane that should come out for the plane to land is not coming out. And so the plane is going to crash land. There was one man who was using a golden walking stick to walk about the cabin, boasting that he's a golden walking stick and shouting on everybody. When they say the wheel is not coming out and the plane could not land, he sat down gently <laughs> with the walking stick. One of the air hosts who said, Mr. Man, I put on your seat, seat belt because uh, this plane will crash land. He used the stick to hit the head of the woman. Number eight, be respectful. Be respectful. One thing most men want is respect. People don't like women who are disrespectful. Women don't like men who are disrespectful. You bring a man home and he sees your daddy and your mommy, he says, Hi. Uh, they say, Who is this? Say, My boyfriend. Say, ah. They don't know how to greet in their family. He say, Well, he was born in England, so that's, that's how they greet. Hi. 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 Number nine. Do not be too forward. Do not be too forward. Men don't like women who are too forward. Too forward. Too forward. Ten. Do not be too aggressive. Do not be too aggressive. Eleven. Don't be Mr. Or Mrs. Know it all. Before they say something, you say, I know. Before they say something, you say, I know. Say, yes, I was in Russia. I was in this. I know. I know. I know. Unless you don't know anything. I know. I have a friend like that who used to think that he knows everything. So he went to American embassy to get a visa. They look at his passport. They say, this passport is a virgin passport. You have never traveled anywhere before. We can't give you a visa. If you have traveled to somewhere before, come back. My friend was very clever. I don't know how they arrange it in Nigeria here. He didn't leave Nigeria. 
they stamp his passport that he has visited Romania. That he visited Romania, he came out of Romania. And they stamp his passport in and out as if he went. So he now went back to American embassy with the <laughs> with the passport. And so when he got there, the lady that was interviewing saw the uh, that he went that the man went to Romania and came out. Oh, the lady was very excited. Said, "Oh, you went to Romania?" Say yes. Hey, really? How good? Was that your first time there? Say yes. And the lady began to mention names of what was in the capital city. And I found that my friend was looking blank. <laughs> it was then, in know, this word that he had never visited the place. He so, said, so before I count, I, I don't know many, he said, get out of this place. Don't be Mr. and Mrs. Noel. Number 12. Don't be too argumentative. Argumentative. When you argue too much, you argue, 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 and argue, and argue. No, people don't like those who argue. They get put off. People run away. When they find that you're arguing too much. Number 13. Slow down and learn. Slow down and learn. There's plenty of things to learn in life. Proverbs 19.2. Slow down and learn. It's not good to have zeal without knowledge. Slow down and learn. Number what now? 14. Is it 14? Okay. <laughs> Change. Now, this is a serious matter. Change your level of praying. Change your level of prayer. If you find that you are not getting results on time, then change your level of prayer. That's number 13. Is that right? 14. Change your level of prayer. Number 14. You say, what do I mean? There are seven levels of prayer. I'm still on that number 14. Seven levels of prayer. The first level is ask. Asking. Asking is to desire to want something. If you ask, 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 nothing is happening. Then go to second level. Seek. Seek. That is, you want to find out why. You are digging deep. You are asking questions. Seek. Please, are you understanding me or not? I don't mind stopping at this level of prayer, so, because uh, it may be all that many of us need. You begin to ask, Father, I want to marry. I want to marry in the name of Jesus. It's not coming on time. Then go to second level of prayer. Seek. Why am I not getting answer? What is going on here? That's a seeking prayer. If you pray the seeking prayer, still there is no answer. You go to level number three. Knock. Knock is where you now begin aggressive prayers. Aggressive prayers. You start to make it constant, 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 constant prayer. Constant prayer. That's what you call knocking. Knocking like this. Constant prayer. You are knocking the gates of heaven. Knock, 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 knock. Constant prayer. If at that level two, you find that still answer is not coming, you change the level to fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. There is fasting and there is fasting. That is what you call kindergarten fasting. That's what you call ice cream fasting. That's what you call uh, executive fasting. <laughs> But then there is what you call the wilderness fasting. Jesus did wilderness fasting. Elijah did wilderness fasting. Executive fasting is fasting in the morning. You prepare your food, your sausage rolls, your bread, your butter, 
you already fold it nice and neat in your bag. It's already smelling in your nose. And you are looking at the clock. You are looking at the clock. It's five minutes to twelve. You begin to bring out your bag. You are still looking at the clock. Then at twelve o'clock, start eating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've not started fasting yet. <laughs> If at the fasting level, you still are not getting a kind of result quickly, you move to the next level of prayer called petition. Petition combined with weeping. The crying prayer, or what you call liquid prayers. You go to liquid prayers. You combine crying with your prayer like Anna did. And it got result. If at that level of prayer too, you don't still get what you want, you go to the next level, which you call vow. You make a vow. You make a vow with the Lord. He said, and Anna vowed a vow that if you will give unto thy maid servant a son, I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. No razor shall touch his head. You too make a vow before the Lord what you shall do if you find that all those ones are not getting you results. Number seven. If your vow too has not brought result, you now go to the last level of prayer, which is called wrestling. Wrestling. Jacob wrestled with God. You now begin a wrestling match. Wrestling is the introduction of violence into the prayers. According to Matthew eleven twelve, which says, As from the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. And the violent take it by force. And the violent take it by force. To use that worry English, the people will not go gree. They will take them by gree gree. <laughs> violent take it by force. Those are the seven levels of prayer. Change your level of prayer. You change your level of prayer. Number 15 now. Engage in daily positive confession. Daily positive confession. We're confessing daily. I am getting married. I will get the husband God wants for me. I will get the wife God wants for me. Make sure that a day does not pass without you saying it. Those words, those words you are saying, don't be ashamed. If you feel that people will be laughing at you, lock your door. If they say you're already mad, don't worry. It's not madness. Right? A closed mouth is a closed destiny. When you begin to talk, when you begin to say it out, begin to say it out, begin to confess it, confession will bring possession. You lock up your door or in the bathroom, I'm getting married. My husband is coming. My wife is coming. And you begin to prophesy that one. Begin to confess it. It magnetizes your partner to you from wherever the person is hidden. 17. 16. You practice your faith. Practice your faith. You know, sometimes when we are praying for people looking for fruit of the womb, we ask them to bring baby's clothes. Bring, uh, bring a maternity gown. They come with maternity gown, although they are not pregnant yet. They come with babies' clothes, although those babies are not there yet. And they whoop, whoop. Those things are items of faith that they buy to ignite heaven to work for them. So if you are living in a room and you have been sleeping on one side of the room, one side of your bed, begin to point to that second side. If you have put your book, your pillow on that second side, clear it. Be pos- be, be st- Pointing by faith, that your partner will come to your side. A positive, you, you make preparation. Start making preparations towards it. Start making preparation towards it. Don't just relax and just, just start. You don't do anything about it. Just start making preparation in faith that eventually uh, you're going to get married and the hand of God 
will be upon you and yeah, you will do what God wants you to do. Number patience. 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 Love is patient. 18 now. Always think about pure things. Philippians 4 8. Think about pure things. 19. Flee from sin. Any sin will push your miracle further away. And 20. Serve God. Serve God. Make sure you are doing something for God. Don't, because of what you are going through, abandon the service of your master. Make sure you are doing something for God. I think I would like to stop here. Uh, because if you, this 20 is enough for you to attract to your life the kind of partners God wants you to have. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Raise up your right hand again. Say, everybody between me and my divine partner. Die! In the name of Jesus. <laughs>